हेलो नमस्ते वनकम सताल आदाब असलम वालेकुम मैन अ वेरी वॉम गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून वेन एवर यू आर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ नॉन रूटीन मैथमेटिकल आइडेंटिटी इट इज़ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग नॉन रूटीन बिकॉज इट इज़ नॉट यूजली थॉट इन स्कूल्स बट इट डज नॉट इन्वॉल्व अ लॉट ऑफ सोफिस्टिकेटेड मैथमेटिक्स इट just involves your understanding of completing the square method which is taught in class 8th 9th and 10th so i think it is a very useful identity with regard to olympias and it is a very use uh, it will be fun for math enthusiasts because it involves a lot of fun algebra as well let us start so sufi germain identity simply asks us to factorize a power 4 plus 4b power 4 a simple expression but its factorization led to a breakthrough in mathematics by the way let me introduce who sufi germain was sufi germain was a german mathematician who wanted to prove fermat's last theorem but ended up discovering her own identity like you know a square minus b square can be written as a plus b into a minus b similarly if you are able to factorize a power 4 plus 4b power 4 uh you will get sufi germain's identity and it is not very tough you just need to uh use the completing square methods or completing square method that is taught in your school i think in high school yeah so let's start so for factorizing this what we first do is we represent it in the form of x square plus y square where in x is this a square and then y is this 2b square okay i think that's very clear then what do we do we already know i think this is a standard approach for solving any x square plus uh, i mean solving any completing square uh problem or any factorization problem for that matter wherein you have x square plus y square you add 2xy and then subtract 2xy okay so i have added 2xy and then subtracted 2xy now you write it of the form x plus y whole square and then minus 2xy x plus y whole square and then minus 2xy so it's very clear right i am saying x the x that i am speaking of refers to a square and the y that i am referring to is 2b square okay now you write you can factorize this as a square it's not it has not yet been factorized you can simplify it as a square plus 2b square whole square minus 4 times of a square b square okay now interestingly enough both these terms are perfect square 4 times a square b square can be written as 2 ab whole square and that's what i do it yeah now this is of the form a square minus b square and that can be written as a plus b into a minus b and that's what has been done so the complete a power 4 plus 4b power 4 can be factorized into a square plus 2b square plus 2ab into a square plus 2b square minus 2ab i think that's very clear we have just used simple identities added some terms subtracted some terms and i think that became very clear when we proceeded further we then uh finally reached the form a square minus b square where we uh then further factorized into a square a plus b into a minus b and this is how it has been factorized a square plus 2b square plus 2ab whole into a square plus 2b square minus 2ab now you can further factorize it and this factorization is although useful but more useful is the next step wherein you factorize it in this form 
a plus b whole square and i will explain how do you fact how do you do it a plus b whole square plus b square whole multiplied to a minus b whole square plus b square here you have a square plus 2b square plus 2ab now what i do is i separate i write 2b square as b square plus b square b square plus b square okay so a square plus b square plus 2ab is a plus b whole square and then this b square is left out similarly you can factorize this term as well okay or the other way to do it is just uh, expand a plus b whole square and then add b square you will get this okay expand a minus b whole square and then add b square you will get this both are very important i think the two major uh, uses of this identity is first in factorization of course and the other one is in proving if a number is prime or composite so it is also very useful in finding the nature of a number now that's very interesting we will look into some problems related to it uh, the it has a very extensive use and has been used in various olympiads whether in us or india it has been used extensively so we have been asked and this is a very simple problem as uh, we have just started the session so i think let us first encounter some simple problems p power 4 plus 4 uh but by the way i would like to tell you that this problem uh was once encountered in inmo inmo that is the third stage of indian olympiads government olympiads of course so actually they did not ask you to factorize this as such because that would have become really simple problem uh there was a lengthy question which involved a lot of steps but at one place you had to factorize this particular expression and i think if you know sophie germain it becomes very easy to factorize it or else it becomes time consuming and of course there is no lack of time in the examination of inmo but nevertheless let us try factorizing this term we first write p power 4 plus 4 in the form of a power 4 plus b 4b power 4 i mean uh first we try to find out what is a and what is b here where a and b are the standard notations in the sophie germain identity so we conclude that a is p and b is 1 from simple manipulations and then we apply the sophie germain identity we know a power 4 plus 4b power 4 is a square plus 2b square plus 2ab whole into a square plus 2b square minus 2ab now you just need to substitute a and b and you would you would be done okay so you would get the final factorization as p square plus 2 plus 2p into p square plus 2 minus 2p so i think this is very clear let us move on next question is the second usage as i told you it has two extensive or two most common usage as you wish to say uh, one is with regards to factorization that we saw in the previous slide and another with regards to finding the nature of a number and this question is regarding that you need to prove that 3 to the power 44 plus 4 to the power 29 is a composite number is an interesting isn't it now let us represent it in the form of a power 4 plus 4b power 4 uh let us find out what a and b are and i think this has been rightly done uh 3 power 11 whole raised to the power 4 plus 4 into 4 raised to the power 7 whole raised to the power 4 and then things like that you have a is equal to 3 power 11 and b is equal to 4 power 7 okay now you just substitute or you apply the uh, sophie germain identity and you get this as your factorize Uh, as your factorization you have two terms okay and i think it's uh, useless to call out each and every term okay you can read it you can find it out but what is interesting is that this is not done you need to understand why are we factorizing this particular number 
to prove that any number is a composite or a prime number we need to look into its factors and that is the key reason why we are factorizing it you need to understand that if we have a prime number it will have only two factors and i think those are very clear two factors that is one and the number itself okay so if a number has more than two factors if any natural number or any number for that matter has more than two factors then that would be called a composite number a composite number so if we are successful in proving that this particular number has more than two factors or it has factors other than the number or one itself then we will be done now the thing is if any one of these two factors i have factorized it into two terms if any one of these two factors is one then the other one will be the number itself okay so i want to prove that both these factors are greater than one and that's an important step if you don't do that then your proof is incomplete so let's try that out now i think it is very clear that the first term is greater than 1 how is it very clear it's very clear because you are adding so huge powers and there is no subtraction involved no division involved so i think this is very very clear that this is greater than 1 so this particular term is greater than 1 but we cannot deny the fact that this particular term could be the number itself and that will happen only if this particular term is equal to 1 okay so we need to prove that no this is not equal to 1 and secondly it is greater than 1 if we are able to prove it is greater than 1 then i think it is obvious that it will not be equal to 1 how do we do that and that's where and that's where the last step of factorization becomes useful let's see that um if you just want to revisit the sophie germain identity i told you that a power 4 plus 4b power 4 can be written as um a plus b whole square a plus b whole square Plus b square whole into a minus b whole square plus b square. I think this was the last step of factorization that we had, and even here we are going to substitute a and b into this particular factorization. Wherein you have three power eleven plus four power seven whole square plus four power seven whole square whole into three power eleven minus four power seven whole square plus four power seven whole square. Now, I all I have already proven that this is greater than one. Okay, which uh, can. which lead uh, leads us to the conclusion that this is also greater than 1 and that's obvious now to prove that this is greater than 1 we just need to prove that individually these things are greater than 1 and i think that is very obvious this particular term is a perfect square and this will be greater than or equal to 1 okay okay it will be equal to 1 when this particular uh subtraction results in plus or minus 1 so it is equal to or greater than 1 and not less than 1 and this particular term is for sure greater than 1 4 power 7 whole square 
Thus, we can conclude that the sum of a number that is greater than or equal to 1 plus a number that is greater than 1 will always be greater than 1. Can't we? And that's simple deduction, simple logic. And that leads us to the conclusion that this particular term is also greater than 1, which in fact proves that the number presented to us in the question that is 3 power 44 plus 4 power 29 is a prime now is a composite number sorry now it's interesting isn't it you don't know what is the number you never calculated what is the number and if I would have posed that number in front of you then probably you will you would have never been able to find whether it is a prime or a composite number but as it is presented in a very interesting format wherein you can factorize it in the form of a power 4 plus 4 b power 4 that is the reason why you are able to conclude that it is a composite number and it's very interesting you don't know the number but you know it is composite that is mathematics beautiful now let us look into the next question question is a power 4 plus 4b power 4 is equal to 5 clearly given that a and b belong to natural and this is important do remember because at one point you will find a non-natural answer to this okay so how do you proceed in solving such problems standard approach by Sophie Germain seeing this particular term in the left hand side the first thing that I would have done is to apply Sophie Germain and factorize it into two terms that is a square plus 2ab plus 2b square into a square minus 2ab plus 2b square interesting now I would give myself a pause and understand that till now I had been dealing with some composite numbers and now I am being posed with a prime number and there is a special reason for this which you will find at the end of the slide 5 is a prime number okay it belongs to prime what is the speciality of prime as discussed in the previous slide primes have only two factors one and the number itself okay so it can be factorized into two terms 1 into the 1 and the number itself that is 1 into the number now it is for sure that this will always be greater than 1 okay until and unless a and b are natural even if a and b are 1 this will be greater than 1 but this can be 1 so this what this basically translates to is this is gonna be 5 and this is gonna be 1 because that are the only two possible factors that 5 has okay as a prime number 5 has only two factors which are 5 and 1 which translates to a square plus 2ab plus 2b square is 5 and a square minus 2ab plus 2b square is 1 now what do we do we do something very interesting we equate this particular term or this particular expression I mean with 1 and that's what I have done now I factorize this like I did in the last step or in the previous slide that is a minus b whole square plus b square now understand this this is gonna be greater than equal to 1 this is gonna be greater than 1 so this is always bound to be greater than 1 but what if one of these terms becomes zero and how can that happen let us suppose that b square is equal to zero if we suppose that b square is equal to zero then that would lead us to a conclusion that b is equal to zero okay that means if b is equal to zero a is equal to one okay no problem that means a is one and b is zero done no 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 that's where you missed the catch that a and b are natural and that is what is the catch b cannot be zero so one solution is gone now you cannot assume that b square is zero but you can assume that a minus b 
होल स्क्वायर इज जीरो विच मीन्स ए माइनस बी इज इक्वल टू जीरो और इट कैन ट्रांसलेट टू बी माइनस ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो एनी वे यू वॉन्ट टू डू इट दैट मीन्स ए इज इक्वल टू बी ओके एंड इफ ए माइनस बी इज इक्वल टू जीरो ओके देन बी मस्ट बी इक्वल टू वन इंटरेस्टिंग इज इंट इट एक्चुअली इन नॉट वन इट शुड बी प्लस और माइनस वन बिकॉज ए एंड बी आर नेचुरल वी आर कंसिडरिंग ओनली वन सोल्यूशन दैट इज बी इज इक्वल टू वन ओके ऑलरेडी विथ आर लॉजिकल डिडक्शन वी कंक्लूडेड दैट ए इज इक्वल टू बी थर्स ए इज ऑल्सो इक्वल टू वन ओके एंड आई थिंक दिस इज द ओनली पॉसिबल सोल्यूशन इफ यू कैन फाइंड एनी अदर सोल्यूशन डू लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो बट इफ नॉट देन एक्सेप्ट इट ए इज इक्वल टू वन एंड बी इज इक्वल टू वन इज द ओनली सोल्यूशन एंड नाउ इज द नाउ आई एम गोन टॉक ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट आई वॉन्टेड टू शेयर विथ यू विच आई टोल वुड बी अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट विथ रिगार्ड टू दिस प्राइम ओके दैट इज दैट द दीज आर द ओनली वैल्यूज ऑफ ए एंड बी दैट इज ए इक्वल्स वन एंड बी इक्वल्स वन इन नेचुरल in the set of natural numbers for which a power 4 plus b power 4 is a prime number interesting isn't it and this is a very special property this is a very special and unique identity which we deduced you can note this down now i think this is the final problem that um, you will encounter in this session it is given that n is greater than 1 n is a natural number that's why we have used n as a variable n is greater than 1 and n power 4 plus 4 power n is an expression we need to prove that for any value of n greater than 1 n will never be a prime this particular expression i mean n power 4 plus 4 power n will never be a prime now how do you do that interesting we look into we take into consideration two scenarios and i think this can be very easily uh, understood by those who who are in class 10th who have uh, studied the euclid's division lemma there are only two possibilities for it okay and these two possibilities are either it is odd or it is even so let's say if it is even let us represent it in the form of 2x if it is odd let us represent it in the form of 2y plus 1 euclid's basic euclid's division lemma okay now we will take into consideration two scenarios that is one being n equal n is even and another n is odd now if n is even then we can very easily conclude that this is going to be a number always divisible by 2 okay and is always going to be greater than equal to 32 and now you need to prove both let's say if you prove that it is divisible by 2 then what you will miss is this that it the number can be 2 itself okay so if the number is 2 itself then of course it's a prime number so you need to prove both it is greater than equal to 32 and it is divisible by 2 uh now this is very simple and i think you can try this and comment about this in the comment section also i this is going to be your homework problem you tell me if n is an even number then what will be the form of its hcf will the hcf be of the form 2x or 4x or 8x or something like that because i want to know if we know that n is even which number can we sh can we surely say that this is the number which will always divide uh, uh this n power 4 plus 4 power n which is the greatest number which we can surely say without even knowing the value of n that it will divide 
n power 4 plus 4 power n which is that greatest number 2481632 and i think i am saying 2481632 and that makes sense because only uh, even numbers and i think only powers of 2 will have the opportunity of being uh, those numbers okay and i want you to look and try to find out the hcf of this particular expression okay and comment it in the uh, comment section below okay now it's very easy to prove when n is even but what when n is odd now when n is odd what do we do we do not disturb this particular n we disturb this n and that's for a special reason uh let's say you have n as even so you would represent it as uh, n as odd you would represent it at 2y plus 1 so 4 to the power 4 to the power 2y plus 1 2y plus 1 now i think most of you know this fact or if not then i will tell you a power m plus n is equal to a power m into a power n so if i have 4 to the power 2y plus 1 then i can write it as 4 to the power 4 into 4 to the power 2y okay 4 to the power 1 into 4 to the power 2y okay that uh, that is what translates to 4 to the power 2y plus 1 okay now n power 4 plus 4 to the power 2y whole to the power 4 now i think this you can find out that 4 to the power 2y can be written as 16 to the power y 16 to the power y 4 into 16 to the power y okay and then that can be written as 4 into 2 to the power 4 into whole to the power y now as we want this in the form of a power 4 plus 4b power 4 we write this as 4 into 2 to the power y whole raised to the power 4 and you have added n power 4 okay so you already have this term now hum <clears throat> now when you have this i think you are ready to apply the sophie germain identity that's what we do <coughs> we applied the sophie germain identity the last step in proving i think i i have again and again and explicitly mentioned that step because that's very important to prove the nature of any number okay now uh, n power 4 plus 4 into 2y whole raised to the power 4 can again be written as um, n plus 2y and again this is greater than 1 which is very th this is greater than 1 which is very obvious because uh, you know uh, n is greater than 1 so this is going to be greater than 1 and this being greater than 1 will always be greater than 1 and even this will be greater than 1 so you can conclude that this particular term is going to be greater than 1 which basically means both its factors both its sophie germain factors <laughs> sophie germain factors are greater than 1 which leads us to the conclusion that this can this but in neither of the case in case 1 where it was even it was not prime and even in this case it is not prime so we can conclude that it will always be a composite number but uh, i think um, that's it mm, i hope you enjoyed this session and if so please do let me know in the comment section and also like share and subscribe this channel for the latest updates press the bell icon and stay tuned with ramesh knowledge index thank you